okay so now we will solve some problems in the first exercise we will prove that show zp with respect to addition modulo p has no non trivial subgroups means zp cannot have non trivial subgroups means the meaning of this is that zp has only trivial subgroups okay and we all know what is meaning of trivial subgroups trivial subgroups means singleton identity and the full group these are called a trivial so we are trying to show in this exercise that zp cannot have any trivial uh, any non trivial subgroups so the solution is very easy so let us write so g is zp so obviously g is a finite group and p is prime i'm sorry i forgot to write a p is prime p is always denoting a prime okay so if zp has a subgroup if zp has a subgroup h then by lagrange's theorem what should happen order of h must divide order of g so this means that order of h must divide p but p is a prime and if any number is dividing a prime and that order of h has only two options either order of h is 1 or order of h is equal to how much it is equal to p correct so a order of h has only two options if order of h is 1 means what h has only one element so who is that one element in that case that one element has to be identity because h is a subgroup and if order of h is p and group is also having p elements in that case uh, what must be the subgroup h the subgroup h must be complete should be so we have started with that h is uh, any subgroup okay if h is any subgroup of zb then and we have ended up with the conclusion that this h must be either identity or it must be either zp therefore h is trivial subgroup therefore h must be trivial subgroup of what of zp right so any subgroup of h sorry any subgroup of zp must be trivial subgroup means zp cannot have non trivial subgroups okay so if you look at the second exercise now if order of g is a prime number now i'm not taking g as zp if order of group is a prime so where p is prime then g has no non trivial subgroup same i the answer is the same instead of just having zp now i'm just writing a general g the solution will be same because g is finite so and if h is a subgroup of g then order of h must divide order of g and this is a prime number so order of h must be p order of h divide p therefore h order of h is either 1 or order of h must be p and in that case my h will be either singleton identity or h must be the full group correct therefore this means that if you take any prime order group it will have only two subgroups and those two subgroups will be what those two subgroups will be trivial subgroups so any prime order group has only two subgroups and they are trivial subgroups okay so if group is a uh, if g is a group of order 11 then how many subgroups will g have
of G, the answer is two. It has only two subgroups of order less than or equal to five must be abelian. Every group of order. Less. So you take any group which is ha having order less than or equal to five. So in any group of order one, we know what is the group of order one. The group of order one is the singleton identity. Any group of order two, there are many groups of order two, Z2, one minus one, etc. You take any group of order three, examples is Z3, one, omega, omega square, and there may be more also. Any group of order three. If you take any group of order four, any group of order four is uh, either you take Z4 or you take one minus one I minus I, the roots of unity, or you may have uh, a Klein's four group, which is V V4. Okay, these are some examples of groups which are of order four and you take any group of order five which is z5 and so on okay so now what we are proving in this exercise is no matter what the group is which is a group of order less than or equal to five that group is always an abelian group okay now why is the statement true so we will now justify this very simple logic so solution if order of g is one this implies g has to be singleton identity and identity star identity is a law is always equal to identity star identity so this means g is abelian so if the group is having one element then the group is simply abelian if order of g is two, three, or five. This means the order of this group is prime number. And we have seen a result in our previous classes that if order of G is prime, then G must be cyclic. We have proved in our previous classes that any prime order group, a group which has prime order, has to be a cyclic group. And we have also proved in our previous classes that every cyclic group must be abelian. The result that I'm using here is cyclic implies abelian. So finally, if the group is of order one, then what has happened then it is of a it's a billion group of order two three and five all are cyclic therefore they are abelian remains only what remains only group of order four so let's go to group of order four if order of g is four then group is of two types any group of order four is of two types it is either equivalent to z4 or it is either isomorphic to Z4 or it is V4, which is the Klein's four group. And we know that Z4 is cyclic. And we know that Klein's four group is abelian, but not cyclic. It's abelian, but not cyclic. Means V4 is abelian. I'm not wondering about whether it is cyclic or not. I'm sure that V4 is abelian. What about Z4? Is Z4 abelian? Cyclic is always abelian because any cyclic group is abelian. So no matter whether it is isomorphic to Z4 or it is isomorphic to V4, it is of the type Z4 or it is of the type V4. The group will always be what? The group will always be an abelian group. So the order G is equal to four has two cases. And in either of the cases, in both the cases rather, I'm sorry, the group turns up to be what? The group turns up to be an 
abelian group so now we declare that any group of order 4 any group of order less than or equal to 5 is always an abelian group why we are not talking about 6 why we are not talking about 6 because we know that if order of g is 6 then the group need not be abelian right what is an example in front of our eyes then g need not be abelian and who is that group which is a, on a group of order 6 which is not abelian is example s3 S3 has six elements. It's a group of order six, but it is not abelian. Therefore, the above result is true only for all the groups of order less than or equal to five. Okay, and we also know that every group of prime order is cyclic. Therefore, it has to be abelian. So if you're asked, what about the, if I have a group of order 11, what can I say? Is it abelian or not abelian? So we have proved a result that if the group order is prime, then the group must be cyclic. And once the group is cyclic, then the group must be abelian, right? So if if I if I take two, three, four, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, and so on, any group of these orders all these num these four people are coming because of what because they are all groups of order less than or equal to 5 which we have shown abelian and groups of order 7 11 13 onwards are groups of order prime so they are cyclic so they are abelian therefore all the groups of these orders are what they need not be cyclic i'm not saying that they are cyclic but they are always what they are always abelian groups